Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and how are you doing today? I hope things are going very, very well with you wherever you are in the world. Today, if you don't mind, I would like to share with you just some general first impressions with respect to a certain recent release made by the Criterion Collection. And this is spine number 1000, Godzilla, the Showa era films, 1954 to 1975. Spine 1000, the Godzilla films from the Showa era, 1954 to 1975. You're getting the 15 films from this period, uh, they're Japanese versions, and you are getting two uh, a second versions of two of the films. So, in essence, you are getting 17 films in this set, plus the supplements. So, as a kind of general opening uh, comment, or opening salvo perhaps, I must say that I think this is a very good set indeed. I have had a chance to look over the supplements uh, that are offered in this set, just uh, once through. I've also had a chance to look over the films in the set. Uh, I haven't had a chance necessarily to really dig in and uh, absorb a lot of this information, but I've just had a chance to gloss over them and to really get a first impression of them uh, and see what it is they have to offer. So what are my first impressions of this as a general proposition? This is a, a wonderful set. This is a set that is, in terms of its physical presentation, and I'm, when I mean that, I mean its, its outer uh, presentation, the cover art and, and the color scheme and all that, I find it to be very cool. I like the look of it. I like the color schemes, and I like the, the, the art that is accompanying each of the films that is included in this booklet. So um, it's a very thin booklet on the one hand, yet it is very tall in terms of its dimensions. And so I think one of the things that I've heard or I've, I've read about from other people online who have gotten this set is how do we store this? How do we keep this? Because it doesn't seem to necessarily fit on one's shelves, uh, for instance, that house our DVDs and Blu-rays. I don't think it'll even fit on the sh shelf that houses the laser discs in the background here. And so I'm going to have to think about this as well. But I'm not too concerned about that as much as I am trying to get as much uh, involvement in the films as I can and the supplements as I can. Um, so I should point out that the... Uh, the 15 films are the, uh, well, let me just say right here, we have the 15 films, with respect to which 14 of the 15 are presented uh, as the primary films here uh, in their original Japanese versions, so the, the original Japanese cuts of the films. The exception, of course, is the third film in the series, which is King Kong vs. Godzilla. Now, what's included as the main presentation of, the, of King Kong vs. Godzilla uh, is the American version uh, from 1963. 
uh, which has some significant differences from the original Japanese version. But the Japanese version is made available not as part of the main presentation of the films, but as a supplement. And so you'll find on disc 8, the supplements disc of this set, you will find the uh, King Kong vs. Godzilla, the original Japanese version uh, from 1962. That version has English subtitles, which for whatever reason cannot be removed, so you have to watch the film with those uh, uh, computerized, uh, imposed, superimposed subtitles along the bottom. There is also a particular part in that film early on involving English-speaking characters where you have the character speaking English and then you have their dialogue uh, in Japanese as subtitles which goes along the the right hand part of the screen actually because the, the J Japanese uh, written um, uh, subtitles are actually written uh, from top to bottom so that those Japanese subtitles for that one brief moment of the film or actually it, it's actually in two uh, segments of one scene those are burned in to the film and so those aren't removable anyway and in fact those those burned in Japanese subtitles do appear as burnt in Japanese subtitles in the for example the Japanese blu-ray that I have of the Japanese version of King Kong vs. Godzilla and so um, uh, those apparently are burnt in to the print that was uh, relied upon for this particular transfer. Incidentally, I should also point out that with the exception of Godzilla, 1954's Godzilla and Godzilla King of the Monsters, it is my understanding and impression that the high definition transfers that are for the other films in this set seem to be uh, with respect to the Japanese versions of the films anyway, seem to be the, um, the uh, high-definition transfers that uh, were relied upon for Toho's release of the Godzilla films on Blu-ray. Uh, this is back in 2014, 2013, 2014, something like that. I should also point out that, I'm not sure if you know this, but there has been some 4K restoration work done on the film King Kong vs. Godzilla. But, but, please uh, keep in mind that the Japanese version of King Kong vs. Godzilla that is included as part of the set is not, as far as I can tell, the 4K restoration. And also I should say that the 4K restoration of King Kong vs. Godzilla is one that I, as far as I can tell, as of now, this video has not been released on any kind of home video format like a Blu-ray or something like that. And so, um, uh, as of now, these are the high definition transfers that I understand are the same transfers that were relied upon for uh, Toho uh, Visual Entertainment's release of the Blu-rays a uh, few years ago. So I, I haven't, I admit I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison between, say, uh, the, the films in the Criterion Collection and the films that are for the Japanese Blu-rays, but uh, I, I, my sense is that or my understanding is that they are, uh, again, without any further confirmation on my part. That's what my understanding and inclination is. If I have any uh, corrections to make on that point, I will let you know. Um, I should say also that the soundtracks, the, the, um, uh, the audio tracks, uh, my understanding is that these are uh, LPCM uh, uh, mono uh, tracks for the Japanese uh, versions and then you have for the English dubs uh, not all of the films of course are provided with English dubs for but for those for which the English dubs are provided those English dub soundtracks are I understand it uh, Dolby Digital 1.0 and so uh, the uh, the LCPM mono track mono uh, uh, audio for the Japanese versions is also consistent with uh, the uh, 
uh, the Japanese uh, audio tracks as they appear, for instance, on these uh, 2014 Toho Blu-ray releases in Japan. So my sense is that this is uh, these are the uh, transfers uh, used uh, by Toho in their own releases in Japan, uh, for the most part. Of course, Godzilla, the 1954 film, uh, it looks to be the uh, same. Uh, it looks to be the same uh, transfer uh, as was relied upon. Uh, for the Criterion Blu-ray release back in 2011. And the reason why I say that is because the credits for the transfers appears to be the same uh, that, uh, it, that are indicated in the booklets for each of the, the, um, each of the releases. I should point out, however, that uh, with respect to the there are some minor differences in terms of the programs that were used, for instance, for the removal of dirt, grain, and noise reduction. I think the booklet for the uh, 2011 release indicates, for example, image systems DVNR was used for small dirt, grain, and noise reduction. Whereas if we look at the back of the set here, we can see that the... Um, uh, what is this? Uh, Digital Visions Phoenix was used for jitter, flicker, small dirt, grain, and noise management. I should say, just as a, a general proposition also, that I really love the presentation and the inside of this very much. Um, I should point out that page three so page, sorry about the glare here. So page three begins the essay called Reign of Destruction by Steve Rifle. And I've read this essay already uh, because actually the first thing I did when I opened this was to read the essays. And I must s say and emphasize that this, this essay is magnificent. It is a wonderful, um, it is long, but actually it's quite a concise overview of the Showa era films, the history of the, the, the times uh, that were uh, in which the films were made, a kind of uh, history of the filmmaking techniques and the evolution of the filmmaking techniques, the background of the productions, etc. It's all very concisely described here in the order of the films itself. And so there is a historical context that is being provided by Steve Rifle in this brilliant essay. So I strongly recommend that you take a look at that. And then what we have, of course, is each of the films information presented. So this is the first, and each of the, the essays for the films is written by uh, Ed uh, Gojizeski. And so Steve Rifle and Ed Gojizeski are two essentially Japanese film experts they are Ishiro Honda experts. I think they both co-wrote a book on Honda. And also, they are uh, Godzilla experts, and so they know their stuff. Ed Gojizeski's essays on each of the films, uh, really brilliant. They are not necessarily synopses. They are more uh, general explanations of what the films are about, but then they go into some detail about the background, some of the uh, significant points, some bits of trivia, uh, and also some other uh, uh, details about the production that are significant, I think, when trying to consider these films as, a, as, uh, as what they might uh, stand for, etc. And then we have cast and credits here, in English. But what's really nice, and I love this detail, I don't know if you can tell, but under each of the titles of the films, which are in this lovely huge font, uh, we have underneath the film title in Japanese, Gojira, and then the, the English transliteration of that Japanese word. So here is Gojira right here, which is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And that continues on throughout the other um, the other films. For instance, I should say here that the next film in the set is this film, oops, which is Godzilla Raids Again. And again, I apologize for the glare. But what I love here, it says 
ゴジラの逆襲 right there and it actually has the Japanese and it has the English、uh, ゴジラの逆襲 under that which is really lovely、um, wonderful touch I love that little detail、uh, if we're talking about details for the moment I should just point out just a couple things that I noticed immediately for instance while I'm on the Godzilla raids again page I don't know about your copy if you have it but if you look at the cast There is a character that is listed here as Koehi Yamaji, K O E H I Yamaji, and I think that's a spelling error. This actually should be Kohei Yamaji, not Koehi Yamaji. So the spelling, I think, should in fact be in English O H E I, but, in, but actually the in the book it's spelled, at least in what I, the copy I have, K O E H I, which I think is a Is a spelling error of the character's name.、Um, but that's just a,、uh, one detail that I just wanted to bring up. It, it's, I don't think it's a, a game changer in any event. But what I, again, these, the, the,、uh, I was talking about the, the titles、uh, that appear, the Japanese titles that appear under each of the, the English titles, which is really fag-、uh, magnificent.、Um, just one little detail about that while I'm at, on that. Again, I, I don't want to、uh, sound ungrateful、uh, because I, I really love this set and I, I really love what it's trying to do.、Uh, I'm just opening here to Godzilla vs. Megalon. And I notice, at least on my copy, it says under there the Japanese title, Gojira Tai Megaron. And then it says in English, Gojira Tai Megaron. I don't know if you know this, but the Japanese title of this film is Gojira Tai Megaron. It's not Megalon, it's Megaro. So that can be spelled in English as M E G A R O without the N. And the, when it was time to make the English title, the, the title was Megalon. And so that was the, the name of the title, and that's the name of the kaiju of that film, Megalon. The Japanese title, though, is Gojira Tai Megaro. Unfortunately, cri- what Criterion did here, they, they, I think this is just another typo. In the Japanese, Uh, katakana, it says Gojira Tai Megalon. So they added an N sound to the end、uh, of the Japanese title, which but that's actually incorrect. It should be Gojira Tai Megalo without the N sound. They managed to remove the N at the end of the Japanese transliteration of the, of the Japanese title、uh, in English. So I'm sorry, the English transliteration of the Japanese title in English, which is fine, but the, the Japanese title is Gojira Tai Megalo, not Gojira Tai Megalon. So that is,、uh, that's, that's another, I guess, minor, minor point.、Uh, I'm not sure what your copy says, but、um, that's what my copy says.、Um, also, I should say,、um, I'm really sorry to have to do this, but I, I don't want to forget. But、um, there are some instances of characters in the cast、uh, credits that,、uh, for whatever reason, are、uh, incorrectly named. Now, I've opened to Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, and I've noticed, for instance, there is、uh, f- the third character from the top there.、Uh, the the、uh, actress' name is Reiko Tajima, and the cast listing indicates her character's name as being Saeko、um, Kaneshiro. Her last name is Kaneshiro, and in fact, the, the subtitles. For the Criterion release, the English subtitles actually call her or they refer to her as Saeko Kaneshiro. There's a, pr- a scene at the very early part of the film where she is first introduced and she introduces herself, at, at least according to the English subtitles on the Criterion release, as Saeko Kaneshiro. In fact, that's not her name. Her name in Japanese is actually Saeko Kanagusuku. Kanagusuku. And、uh, the, I, I think what happened was that the,、um, at some point,、uh, p- perhaps、uh, in the preparation of、uh, the, an earlier Japanese or English version of this,、uh, whoever was in charge probably looked at the Japanese kanji characters of the name. Uh, Saeko Kanegusuku, because the ca- Japanese characters can also be more commonly read as Kaneshiro, but、uh, the, the actual pronunciation of this particular character's name 
using the same characters is kanagusuku. So in fact, the same characters can be used to say kaneshiro or kanagusuku, but for the purposes of the film, the character is clearly named Saiko Kanegusuku. And she, it's clear because she actually calls herself, when she, uh, when she introduces herself in Japanese, she says her name is Saiko Kanegusuku. So her name is not uh, Saiko uh, Kaneshiro as it's indicated uh, here. So that might be a little bit of trivia that you can use uh, when you are uh, talking to uh, anyone uh, who is knowledgeable of the Japanese uh, version. Uh, so you can um, impress them with your knowledge of the Japanese versions, uh, so much so that you know that the, the criterion uh, listing of the name uh, Saiko Kane, Kaneshiro is not in, in fact correct. It should be Kane, Saiko Kanegusuku. There's also an error like that for the film Go Godzilla vs. Hedera. Uh, there is a character here, uh, again if we look at the cast listing for the Godzilla vs. Hedera, there's a character here which is one, two, three, four, five from the top. And this is by, uh, played by the actor and singer Keiko Mari. And this is the character of Miki. Uh, her name listed here is Fujiyama. Miki, uh, the character of Miki is the one who's uh, seen at the very start of the film, the opening credits, and she has the song, uh, you know, Kaese, Kaese. So uh, she has this uh, kind of prominent role, uh, but her name as it's listed here, is indicated as being Miki Fujiyama. But that's actually not correct. It, it, her actual Japanese name is Miki Fujimiya. Not Fujiyama, but Fujimiya. Um, I don't quite know why this was made. I, I can only assume that this was an, uh, something that was done for an earlier English version that was then relied upon when making this cast list for uh, this Criterion presentation, but in fact the, the name is Fujimiya and that's that's unmistakable uh, in the Japanese version. So um, again, if you ever are talking to any Godzilla experts with respect to Godzilla vs. Hedra, you can impress them with your knowledge of the fact that uh, unlike what's listed in the Criterion version, the name of the character is in fact Miki Fujimiya. Uh, so there, there are just some uh, little elements there that might be of interest to you. So. Um, those are just very minor, minor uh, comments of a kind of um, just some minor typos or presentations, uh, presentation issues of this. But uh, the, the overall impact, I don't think, is uh, significantly uh, adversely affected by those, uh, those little details that I've brought up. And once again, um, you know, I know uh, the people who make these are only human. I'm, I mean, I, I'm human, and I make uh, a number of errors all the time. So this is a very, uh, very forgivable. I think it, it's not a not a uh, uh, terrible thing at all. Um, and I think also the the fact that the films themselves are being made available uh, like this really, uh, really outweighs any kind of minor critique that I might have of the type that I've just uh, outlined right now. And the reason is, of course, you're getting the Japanese versions uh, in these uh, high-definition transfers, which I think are actually pretty good. Uh, there aren't any uh, issues here, uh, maybe with the exception of King Kong versus Godzilla, the Japanese version, but uh, there are a little bit of uh, picture quality issues with that film, but that f that film is actually a little bit notorious for picture quality issues, and so uh, that's not the fault of Criterion. Uh, and so uh, the version that we have here is, I think, the uh, uh, it's it's one of the the best that you'll ever uh, find, at least as of uh, this point in time. Um, what I think the fact that we have the Japanese versions being made available in this one-stop shop is very exciting and I am quite impressed with that fact alone. And also I am very impressed with the essays that were provided by Steve Rifle and Ed Gojizensky. I have said in the past that, well let me just take a step back, as you know the Criterion release includes, as far as commentary tracks are concerned, only the commentary tracks by 
David Cowlett for the film Godzilla or Gojira and Godzilla King of the Monsters. So the, uh, the, the 1954 original Godzilla and then the 1956 Americanized version of Godzilla. So those are the only two commentary tracks that you have. We don't get any commentary tracks that were, for instance, made available under classic uh, media releases of the film. So no Steve Rifle or Ed Gojizensky commentary tracks that we saw for other films like um, like Godzilla or um, you know other tracks like Godzilla Raids, Raids Again or something like that. So no, nothing like that uh, for any of the other films other than Godzilla. So we're not getting any of the commentary tracks, which is on the one hand I think a little bit of a shame, especially because Steve Rifle and Ed Gojicenski were directly involved uh, to, in some capacity anyway with this particular Criterion release. The fact that they were writing the essays uh, is proof of that. So it, on the one hand, it, it's a shame that they they couldn't provide any new commentary tracks for this Criterion release. So I, I think that would have been really splendid. Incidentally, if you have a chance to listen to any of those commentary tracks that they have done, for example, for, uh, for classic media, uh, I strongly recommend that you listen to them. They are very comprehensive and, and nice overviews of, of certain details and history and background of each of the films. Uh, but but with that in mind, uh, I should point out they haven't they don't provide commentary tracks for all the other films, but for just a, a select number of them. Uh, but uh, speaking of Steve Rifle and Ed Gojicenski, what's actually really great about this release, in lieu of the lack of commentary tracks, in other words, the fact that this release does not have commentary tracks for the other films I don't think is is uh, an overall detriment because of the fact that each film is accompanied by an essay by Ed Gojicenski and it has that overview essay at the start by Steve Rifle. Those essays are packed and while they are short and brief they do have a kind of commentary-like quality about them. In other words they do provide a nice written uh, brief but still nice overview of each of the films and uh, what their significance is, respectively speaking. And so uh, that's why I love the essays. I think uh, the essays are perhaps one of the best parts of this release uh, because they provide really nice bits of information. So, some of the bits of information, I, I was actually surprised. I did, was learning about some of them for the first time. And so I was uh, learning something quite new uh, with some of the information there. A lot of the information, I think, is very famous in Godzilla fan circles. So it might not be new for someone who is known Godzilla films for all of his or her life, but uh, there are still some details that I, I, I must admit that were, were new to me. And while I'm not the biggest Godzilla expert, I do try my best to watch as many of the supplemental features on Japanese releases and and uh, the like. And I do have a number of Japanese releases, as well as a number of the U.S. releases that I, I'll try to speak to uh, in later videos. But um, uh, I guess my point is that, on the one hand, the commentaries, uh, the lack of commentaries, I think, it could be seen as a weakness. But I think com the release tries to do its best uh, using the medium of the essay, the written essay. And so I think the essays are therefore so significant and very key and incredibly informative, uh, such that I don't necessarily think that the lack of commentaries is a is a a kind of deal breaker. Uh, I might have thought that before I got the set, but now that I've been able to read the essays, I think that the essays are um, are a fine kind of cover for this uh, need for information on the background and uh, production history, etc. It's not the again, it's not the most detailed because you only have one page for each. But I think it's it's uh, really given the amount of space that is uh, space limitation there. I think it's really good. Um, I should really talk about this set in a separate video or separate video. So what I'm going to do is I think I will try to tackle this set in separate videos because there's actually so much that I do want to talk about and I don't think I can cover everything in one video.
So I'd like to talk about my views of the cover art in one video. I'd like to talk about my views of the supplements in another video. I'd like to talk about my views of each of the films uh, in separate videos as well, because I think the the, the set is is quite uh, quite incredible uh, in certain regards. Uh, uh, in particular, the supplements, and I should say this because there are a number of supplements that this set has that are very actually difficult to get uh, in Japan through Japanese releases. Now, I have been very fortunate over the years to have been able to get my hands on a number of different releases in Japan of the Godzilla films and so I have a number of the releases on DVD I have a m many copies of of different DVD releases for instance of uh, Godzilla or the other uh, Showa era films and the reason is because uh, for many of the DVD releases in Japan a lot of the supplemental features and the blu-ray release of course the supplemental features don't necessarily uh, carry throughout the entirety of all the releases. In other words, some of the releases have some supplemental features that don't necessarily appear on other releases. And so it can be quite uh, quite a thing if one is seeking to get all of the supplemental materials that have been made available in Japan. You can't get everything unless you get all of the releases. In other words, the most, rele the most recent Blu-ray release of, let's say, the original Godzilla does not have ported over to it all of the other supplements that were made on previous DVD releases. And so if you want to get... Um, uh, if you want to get some of or all of the other uh, supplements, you have to get other Japanese releases other than the most recent Blu-ray release. Criterion, in its 2011 release of Godzilla, and also, you know, by extension through this uh, Spine 1000 set, for the film Godzilla, had a number of supplements that were criterion produced so there were the the interviews um, well there was that interview with uh, Haru Nakajima the suit actor who played uh, Godzilla for all the films up to the his last appearance as Godzilla in the series which is Godzilla vs. Gigan um, and also you had the effects technicians uh, Yoshio Irie and Eizo Kaimai also uh, interviewed in a criterion produced uh, supplement and also you had a criterion produced interview of uh, the star uh, Akira uh, Takarada and so you had these uh, great supplements that were criterion produced that you couldn't find anywhere else in Japan you had to go to the criterion disc to get those particular supplements which was great also the same is true for the David Callitz commentaries you know you couldn't get the David Callitz commentaries in Japan you could only get those through the Criterion collection which is great um, then there was the um, so that that that's what makes the Criterion set really good is that there are some supplements that have been produced by Criterion exclusively uh, for purposes of the set and extending on to the the, uh, the the new supplements here. Some examples of new supplements that were made exclusively for the set are, for instance, the interview with Alex Cox. Now, the interview with Alex Cox, I, I do want to talk about this in detail because I, I, I think it's rather significant. But if I were just to say very briefly what my thoughts about the, the interview would be, I think it, it's a very good interview. I think it serves as a kind of... Uh, I'm not sure. It, it's like... Um, uh, he he speaks a lot about the, his general impressions of the the Showa era films as a whole, focusing I think uh, a lot of time um, to examples taken from the first Godzilla film I think understandably, uh, but then talking about the rest of the films as sort of a general um, a, a general th uh, proposition, uh, and it's not a very long interview, but I think it's 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 a nice setup uh, for a kind of appreciation for the films and what they stood for. Um, but other, there were other uh, criterion produced supplements uh, that are really great. So there's one with uh, Bin Furuya, and there's one with Tsugutoshi Komada. And um, Bin Furuya is very famous in the world of Tokusatsu uh, Eiga, but he does have connections with Godzilla films, and so that's discussed. Uh, 
to some detail in the interview, which is great, and uh, it's really great to see him speak. And this this is a Criterion produced interview, and so you this is the first time I've seen this interview because it was a Criterion. It is a Criterion exclusive one to this set. The same is true for the uh, interview with Komada, who is the suit actor who played Jet Jaguar in Godzilla vs. Megalon. Now, this is another interview that I've never seen before because it was, again, Criterion exclusive. And to watch this interview, it, it is a brief one, but to watch this interview and to hear his thoughts about his workings with the suit, his, the idea of what his notion of the character of Jet Jaguar was, etc. Incredible. In, absolutely incredible. I Again, I learn something new about this particular facet of Godzilla films that I had not known about before because um, you know I'd never seen this interview before. So it, it was really great to see this uh, played out. Uh, really lovely. Um, and then uh, there are then other sort of archival type of materials that are used for supplements that are included in this Godzilla set. What's nice is... Uh, well, first of all, there is the arc, there is an interview with uh, the composer Akira Ifukube. Uh, there are two of them, in fact. One of them is a carryover from the 2011 Blu-ray, and also I should point out that it's an interview that can also be found on the uh, Japanese Blu-ray of this. So it's not one that is, I think. Uh, difficult to find if one is uh, exclusively in Japan. But there is a second interview that is new to this set, or it's not, it's, it's new in the sense that it hasn't been included in the previous Criterion release of Godzilla. And it's on the supplements disc of the, the Spine 1000 here. And it's really great. Um, and uh, I don't recall having seen it before, actually. So this uh, was the first time for me watching that particular second interview. Uh, wonderful, wonderful stuff. Again, uh, Ifukube is such a key component in the Godzilla world. And so to have a second interview of him is really quite wonderful. I mean, it's, a, it's sort of a video quality interview, but I don't think the quality of the, the video itself is, is in any way detrimental to the actual content of what he is saying. Uh, just absolute gold. So it's really great. Um, also, there is a Director's Guild of Japan interview with director Ishiro Honda. And this was conducted by Yoshimitsu Banno. And Banno is, as you may know, the director of Godzilla vs. Hedera. So it's uh, one Godzilla director essentially interviewing another Godzilla director. And Honda is, of course, uh, probably the most famous Godzilla director uh, in terms of his work with m all the films that he did. Um, and uh, so this is an interview about him and his life and his career uh, in and out of the Godzilla films. And so th and there's a lovely rapport between the two of them. You know, Bono shows such respect and deference to this uh, to uh, Honda, who is, uh, I'm assuming, his senior. And this was a conducted in 1990s, uh, Directors Guild of Japan. This is also something that it's, I'm not sure exactly how one can see this through any Japanese release. So my understanding is that the best way that one can see this is actually through the Criterion set. And so uh, it's really lovely. As far as I can uh, recall, it, that Directors Guild of Japan interview, for example, is not included as a supplement to any other Japanese release of Godzilla or any other Godzilla, as far as I can recall. I might have to recheck that, but um, uh, so there's that. Also, there is the, um, there is a, a program uh, detailing the creation of Godzilla's special effects and unused effects sequences from Toho releases. And so this is really great because that that's actually a sort of documentary, a special effects documentary that is included on a DVD, another DVD release in Japan. But you can't get that DVD release in Japan unless you get a box set of a number of the Godzilla films. So uh, it's not included as its own supplement here, but you have to get it as part of a box set. Um, and the, uh, the, the, uh, the box sets, it's... It, I don't have it with me here, but the box sets are sort of like this. You know, you have to get a number of the films in these sets, and uh, one of the discs is a, spe a special features disc. And on one of this, there are five box sets in total. And on one of the box sets, 
and I'll show this to you later, is the, uh, the supplemental disc. And on that particular disc is the documentary. Uh, so it's nice to have the documentary here as well. Um, it, Again, it's, um, I suppose it's probably the same thing. You can only get the documentary if you get this particular criterion set. So what's the difference between that and this, I suppose? I mean, that's a good point. But still, uh, it's nice to have that available because it is uh, something that is not necessarily the easiest thing to, to watch here in Japan. So uh, there is that. Um, and let's see. I think that is about all I can say for now as far as general impressions of the of the supplemental materials and the essays and the like uh, even with its uh, sort of minor faults I think it's in very very good so this is Godzilla uh, Spine 1000 the Showa era films 1954 to 1975 and if you don't mind the indulgence what I'll try to do is I'll try to focus on specific aspects of this set going forward in kind of, uh, you know, just, uh, I don't want to go overboard, but I'll just try to uh, highlight a few things that I want to talk about in uh, some other videos going forward. Because as I say, there is a lot to talk about in this set. And I've just gone through it once, but I've already noticed a number of things that I really want to discuss, uh, cover art and the films themselves, etc. And also I do want to share with you my thoughts of the films uh, I, I might have mentioned some thoughts here and there in passing, but I do have a great fondness for these films, very much so. Uh, and maybe at the end of that, I'll try to present to you my own presentation of my favorite films in the series, starting from my least favorite all the way to my most favorite. So uh, if you're interested in, in that kind of discussion, please stick around. Uh, uh, keep, uh, uh, you know, Check back with this YouTube channel, and I will try to upload some videos uh, going forward on this set which is really great and it's a expensive set but if you can get it through the Barnes & Noble sale then I strongly recommend that you uh, you at least consider it. Um, okay my friends so that's it for now and as I say I'll try to revisit this set uh, in other specific capacities uh, in later videos but for now my friends uh, let me leave you and I hope you are doing very, very well, and that you will continue to watch a lot of great, great movies. So until we meet again, my friends, cheers.